we're back. We're back with the video episodes. Remember, I promised them for weeks and months on end and never delivered because, frankly, studios in Australia are four times more expensive than back home. Well, we're finally back because we're back home. So what I wanted to jump on and say before you get into the episode is these will be back every Tuesday at 7 in the morning. I've probably lost quite a lot of listeners that were regular listeners before I went to Australia because I've just been uploading them at random times, talking about random things in random places. But we're now going to be in a structure where I'm going to have regular guests in Glasgow and they'll be uploaded at 7 every Tuesday. Before we get into today's episode, I'm also running an offer. I'm not going to say too much about it because you'll see me on my Instagram stories. You can also sign up to my email list and you'll have priority over everyone else. But what I'm allowing people to do on the 28th of June, if you're part of the email list, you'll be able to come on one-on-one coaching for just 45 quid instead of having to pay for 12 weeks up front, which I'm usually 547 quid for that. I can't stress this enough. I genuinely only have space for like 30 or 40 people. I'm one-on-one and that's my complete and utter max. I won't be doing much content for the foreseeable once to take all of those people on. But the best thing you can do is just DM me more info on Instagram and I'll get back to you and tell you exactly what the offer includes and what coaching includes. Now that's out of the way. Enjoy the show and enjoy next Tuesday at 7 in the morning. Rusty Paul, I don't know if you've noticed. I'm not used to like the full cameras and all that. I've been doing it in my room for ages. Um, Like I was saying before, it's good to meet you in person realise you're good not s- six foot three. I am three foot four. <laughs> <laughs> um, I rattle right into these. I'm glad that you didn't come and meet me when I was in the coffee shop because it stresses me out when I have 20 minutes to chat with people and yeah. they say everyone I want to ask them. I'm like, mate, fucking shut up. I, I, you can, I get that as well where well. I can like... Especially when I'm trying to do videos meeting people in the gym and that, and I've met them and I'm talking before I've recorded anything, and you're like, oh, yeah, I've been answered up anymore. the actual fucking worst. Like, yeah. I had Katie, a girl from where I'm from, that's a PT, come on. Yeah. And, like, I met her before, and she was telling me about our bipolar episodes and all that, and yeah. I was like, I really want to be, like, empathetic here, but I'd like you to fuck up. Ah, uh, yes, I've been already. <laughs> <laughs> and tell me on the podcast, even though yeah. it's absolutely brutal what you're saying, I was like, I can't really hear what you're saying. Um, I'm not an interviewer, right, so I... I don't know how, because you said you haven't been on a podcast before. Have no. you got any nerves? Uh, aye, I'm nervous. There we go. You'll be able to see that. I sweat naturally, by the way. This is normal, but right. it's a wee bit more nervous. Any audio but... listeners, he's got the biggest pit stains I've ever seen in my life. Aye, anyway, aye, a big. How did you start TikTok? Uh, like, what made you start it as well? I started TikTok. I think, I think this is the way everybody might start TikTok. You post trendy stuff, or you post. It was transformations. I lost weight. And I felt good about myself. So I was right. posting stuff about losing, yeah, losing weight. Felt good body-wise, but in my head, I was still just completely ruined. So the stuff I was posting was like being positive and look at the changes you can make. But I was still on the side of TikTok where I'm watching the sad music, the depression So that stuff was your that, algorithm? That was my algorithm. I, I was watching all the stuff where people are like, oh, it's not worth living. Nobody loves me. All this stuff was really, really deep. And... And that kept me in that cycle and I kept posting that sort of stuff and eventually started going into more positive sort of things. Yeah. And then when my algorithm and my TikTok changed, that's why I think TikTok's so important and so big to me, is when I started seeing day changes, I noticed that things in my life changing and I wasn't falling into that rabbit hole of being that negative, depressed person 24-7. Have you seen The Social Dilemma? No, so is that the one on TikTok? Is that the one where not on Netflix where they can, they spoke about, See exactly what you just said, that, like, it goes through all that. Aye, so I'm pretty sure it's about how much your phone actually knows about you and that sort of thing. And that it's, all... Yeah, it's mad things, like, mate, they'll show you, like, if you take a social media break or whatever, you're not going Instagram. Yep, like, it, it does things to pull you back. Like, I like, fr- like, our your ex has just posted something, yep. something as fucked as that. Yeah. See, if I was going through a breakup and I got that message, I fucking broke my phone. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But it didn't matter, because well, I was already checking our stories anyway. Can I not? We all day. No, I'm not I, I sort of done the same thing with, well, so talking about that, because I seen that and it was, um, it was one of, but they'd, they'd, they'd done a sort of, what, I, I don't know if you got it's not a study, but they tried it in America to get people to vote a certain way. Get people to vote a certain way and the people actually voted that way. And right. I think the day after that I was the boy my work Dylan and I was speaking to him about it because Dylan's on the other stuff in space and NASA and like he's on the conspiracy theories and that. And everyone needs one of them in their life, don't they? Aye, aye, he gives you some perspective. And 
I, I didn't get a touch my phone for about three days. Honestly, I just put my phone down. I, I actually gave me the feed a wee bit. And how did you feel when you done that? I, I honestly felt better. That, that's the thing with in my work where I'm still a shambles on work. That's at one point in my life where I'm like, I'm not what I used to be. Like I was young, successful, I'd done very well in my job. Whereas now I'm not that person anymore. Seeing it when I spent the time off my phone. See in the next three days, I think I sold five or six cars and that's like, I was back. Like mm -hmm. My head was back. And that's when all and I started to come into play where I realised how much that phone affects people. It's the hardest addiction to break, I think. Like, no. I, I don't know... I, like, and, and I vape and that's worse that's worse you vape do you? I, oh I vape aye and that's my next thing I actually, after I had to fit this morning um, I put my vape because I couldn't find it and I had to go buy a new one this morning that was like that's how bad that actually is it? like it was first thing I was like I need to go up and go and I vape they're expensive aren't they? aye I don't use like seeing elf bars and that I don't use them I've always had just like a refillable one I don't even know what that is aye what do you call it an elf bar? an elf bar or a what? crystal bar or, or <laughs> what is that astrology you see them all on the street and they're like the wee colourful vape things ah uh, right, like, okay. like one time use I was never into that I was a uh, I was fags when I went out, but only so that I could speak to birds. Nah, uh, I smoke near yeah. <laughs> nah, no, but I, I smoked. Ask birds if you got a lighter. Nah, <laughs> well, yeah. you got a lighter, that's your child, please. My name's Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> I never had that, I was in a Are you single now, see there? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, but no, I was in a relationship for years, so I never had that thing. My full childhood, I was 15 to 25, I was with my ex, but um, I smoked when I was, first time I tried smoking, I was 12, I think. Really? Yeah. Uh, see what like because you're dead open with your <clears throat> story right. on tiktok how like honest and open do you want to be like on a podcast because i don't want to like fucking it. go fill in it throw you have me you have me in like... tears mate you have me in tears you have me laughing you have me going on rants about I mental health i don't know if i want you in tears i'll start crying <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> okay emotional <laughs> no i'll try no cry because i get slaughtered when i cried on tiktok i do think a lot of what you've posted is really inspirational i think you just came up on my for you page like four times when i was in australia and that's right. why i'm because i messaged you ages ago because you were in so i was like you want to do a podcast me, and i was like i oh, can wait five months right. <laughs> um <laughs> but what so instead of like fucking throwing you in and just being like here give you give me your big fucking mm -hmm. story what was your life like when you seem you said just cars is now you're selling cars really badly yeah that's the only thing you've not fixed yeah like Take me back to when you were the top salesman or whatever and I, I, everyone else in your life. I you would were... never say I was a, the top salesman because there's a couple of boys in there who are ridiculous. But um, so I was just really driven. Like, so I, I, I first, my first started working, I left school on a random day I just walked out of school. Um, Love that. I uh, 16. Uh, that's a funny story. My star college growth, if you're listening. I still hate you in this day. I don't hate many people, but this guy was just... I'll call out Mr. Roswell, so all right, he's a fucking... Aye, you, you, you got a teacher, he was our head teacher. So pretty much I was doing my exams, it was my maths exam that day, and I walked past him on the A-wing, like the bit where you go to get help, I had anger management issues when I was younger. Um, walked past him, and he was like, oh, what are you doing next year? I was like, oh, I'm staying on, because I'd done quite well, this was fifth year, so I'd stayed on at a couple of hires, so I was like, I'm doing all right, I'm getting my shit together. Uh, and he's like, no, you're not. That's really cool. Just walked out, never went back. That was me oh, really? in school. Aye, that was my school experience finished. Um, I'm sorry, right? There's a lot of sound teachers out there, but 50% of our school were fucking cunts. Aye, aye. It's, it's people who they only do it to, to get a to get a job or get a career, and they've got no interest in helping children. Like you can tell, you can tell the ones who do. When there was one who I'll get an argument. I'll show Jim Egan, Mr. Egan, the craft the craft and design teacher. That guy helped me so much. Like he just seen. I just cared a lot about everything and it came out through anger because you're young you don't know how to process your feelings and he sort of took me under his wing like when I got chucked at a class he did go into his class and help with the first years and that so there was a lot of things that he'd done for me where he just it just clicked where us do we knew how each other worked what was the anger management like um, what? how did that look like <sighs> it was awful so I, I used to get chucked out of class all the time but never for being angry just for I, 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 my aim was probably to put everyone off Aye, so that may have been a wee bit of me where I was like, I wouldn't say I was a class clown, but like, things got to me, and like, they, if, if I never understood anything, I'm one of these guys who needs to be good at everything, that's the way I am, but if it got to me, I'd never understood that, I'd get angry, and then I had a lot of stuff going on in the, pa in the background as well, um, so it got to the point where I was like, I'm telling I was getting chucked out of class, they eventually took me to the A-wing, and the A-wing was, I can't even remember the teacher's name, I don't think she was a teacher, she was a support worker, and you just get took in a Wednesday in the afternoon into this wee room by myself and her and we sit and we play Anger Bingo, right? <laughs> right aye, anger Bingo, right? So I thought about counting to ten and all that stuff. That would just make like, you angry. Aye, so I'm, I'm getting angrier and angrier 
and I eventually I spoke to him on my dad. About can, you, it. can you tell me more about the game? I really Honestly, I, I, I actually can't remember too much about it. But if anyone wants to, St. Andrews St. Bride, Anish Go Bride, they might remember it. But it was, it's just it was a board game. So you, you sat there and you played on a board, and it was just a bit like you roll the dice and you get to a certain bit, you pick up a card, and it would tell you like what you should be doing when you get angry. And the usual stuff, count to ten, honest stuff, breathing techniques. But it was like. It kind of shows you how far the whole mental health things came forward from what being back there. Um, by the, the women that helped it, the nicest women in the world, I wish I could remember her name, but I just get so pissed off. Like, sitting there, like, what am I doing? Like, I'm, I'm 15, 16, sitting in this room, like an idiot, while all my mates are out, like, at lunchtime or, like, in the afternoon, being young people having fun while I'm sitting here playing a, a room, in a room by myself. Playing anger bingo. Anger bingo. Did anger you tell bingo. like everyone else what you were up to? <laughs> no, because I was embarrassed. Um, because it got to the point where when I spoke to my dad about it, they started taking me to oh. anger management outside the school. So they started taking me to a place. I don't know if the school set it up, but they took me to a place down in Hamilton, and it was the same sort of idea. It was. Uh, it might even been like a psychologist sort of idea. Where in Hamilton was it? I, again, I can't remember. I was like fifteen. My so mum took me to. Uh, it was this big old building up the stairs, up the very top. In every office, I just spoke to a guy. So it could have been like a psychologist. I was just so you know why I might be a bit weird. Paul's a therapist, and I've been oh, doing, is it really? I've, I've been doing therapy with him for right, the last okay. six months. So I literally can't lie about it. I <laughs> um, but my mum, I didn't. I personally don't think I needed therapy when I was young, but my mum took me to therapy like two or three times. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I also didn't really know what was doing. Yeah, what, what she was doing. I think she gaslit me quite a bit. But I remember, <coughs> one of them was in Hampton. Well, in fact, both of them were in Hampton, but one was like, I think it was like near Equis. Right, okay. And that one was more legit. The second time she took me one, it was just some fucking hippie cunt in a scheme. Aye. And I told her to go fuck herself, and she was like, that boy's got problems. And I was like, no, my mum's the problem. <laughs> Aye, I think parents could do that like, out of love as well. And there's a lot of things that I'd actually want to talk about my background and stuff here as well with my parents. We'll get into that, but um, I've lost track of what we're talking about. You were talking about the, the anger bingo. The anger then... bingo. And then going to anger management. So I started getting taken out of school. So I'd finish lunch. My mum would pick me up and take me down to ang- in this anger management place every day. Well, sorry, every Wednesday. Um, and then I eventually told her, like, I'm not going to this anymore. I'm not going to. Oh, I'm going to go in. We talk about the same stuff over and over and over again. And I'm not getting any better. I was like, I'm just. And the way I seen it is like, I was just a young guy. Like, everybody explained to me, well, your heart in your sleeve. Like, I couldn't hide what I was feeling. It's just that it came across that way. And I'm probably still like that to this day, where I, I'm I'm an emotional wreck. Like, I've got so many emotions, and they're always on show. And that might be why my TikToks kind of blow up, because they see that, they see that I'm just, I'm just being me. Yeah. I'm, no, I'm not trying to fake anything. I have a laugh. I have a joke. But that's more to the point where if I'm targeting people who are in the dark side of TikTok, that side, the depressive side of TikTok, if I'm if they're seeing videos with me where I'm talking about things sincerely, depression, and they see me having a laugh, I've got this thing where I think if you if I see somebody having fun, it rubs off on you. It's not I try to give that side out as well instead of just being let's be serious. Yeah, know? it looks like you're trying to show them like the the side of how bad it is, but then also show them like you getting better Aye. as well, so that they can they don't just fucking because I think I remember I done that with. <clears throat> my first breakup i would just watch hundreds and hundreds of people like going through the same thing yeah but it didn't help me get any better no, i might I, I might soothed like i, I was like a, comfort. Rela- yeah, comfort in it. a relatable feeling yep. but all it made it also made me become more negative and more yep. cynical towards the full situation Aye. whereas it was like it was a hole i got myself in watching that sort yep. of stuff so I, I get what you mean about trying to like show them that like get them in with the dark side like show them the dark side but then show them Aye. the rest of it. How did um, it go after school then? Uh, so I actually so feel like... It started going really well. What right? go into your story? Aye, so... So I, I didn't start going well, so... I said I was this young bam. Lo- loved fighting, lo- loved all that side of that. I was playing football, like pro youth at football, doing pretty well. But my anger always getting top of me. It always... It set me back in everything I'd done. Like, I was always getting sent off or I was one of my coaches. And... I, I decided back then I, was like, I need to change this but for me to change it like all the stuff I'd done in the past when anger management the bingo it was always like I had to hide it but you have to hide that side of you you can't be that person so I kept that in for years so when I met my ex 
I kind of just, I patched everyone. I, I just, I'm a bit of a loner as it is. Like, I, I always had friends, like, I was a group of friends, but I was always that guy who was, like, not there. Or I'd, I'd, I'd show up and I'd, like, jump about friend groups. So when I went and started working, so I started as a chef. So I started in the Schofield Farm. Um, 15 year old in there where's that um, in East Kilbride so it's not there much flats now I think um, I went to uh, Ballarat for a year in East Kilbride oh did you we're at Straven Academy and then I went to Stone Hall after that you know, so right. I know East Kilbride quite well right okay well uh, but, so I was seeing the Heritage Walk in East Kilbride yeah but if you're all cut up a hill it used to be just set up there so what started working in there just doing kitchen port and washing dishes but I always loved cooking my big brother was a chef so I used to love watching him and and seeing what he done and i think i must have been one night like, somebody never came in just one see if you had anger management i think that's the worst job you chose <laughs> aye aye but it taught me a lot it did uh, it taught me so much so like one night every chef i've met has been some sort of has been in jail and definitely has aye or something a, they need to sort out aye on their addiction to drugs have, or their alcoholics or, and they have big fucking scary knives when they're shouting at you <laughs> aye <laughs> i know or i've been in a few sort of I near almost getting stabbed or want to stab people at some points and it was the first pub I worked in the chef he was giving me I was such a fucking idiot though like, I couldn't do anything right like I was putting everything through yep. the wrong spell and it all wrong and all yep. that and he came in fucking went mental at me he was also smaller than me he says who the fuck are you talking to you wee prick and then one yep. of the waiters was like he's um was in jail for being an accomplice to a murder and I was like oh, <laughs> Sound gang. <laughs> <laughs> Best pals now. <laughs> what was that? What you want? Paddy? Uh, do, uh, <laughs> do you want a drink? Do you want a bite and end in a shift on that? Oh, Take my tips. Aye. <laughs> oh, amazing. But no, it's... I beat me. I catch on top of a lot, so... I need... Fell at a... Somebody I came into work one day. I started doing the starters and stuff. Loved it. And I was pretty good at it. Well, I was just... I'm going to say, I, I like... Everything in my life is fast-paced. And I think that's how chefing worked for me. Is it's fast-paced. It's busy. If my mind's busy, I thrive. I'm one of those people, the busier I am, the, the more I can get done. Whereas if I'm sitting doing nothing, it all, it all goes to shit. Um, so I started in there and then I went and started working in the Torrance. So I'd done like an apprenticeship in the Torrance that last year. I got promoted to finally be a comedy chef and then worked my way up through that business over three, four years. Get put down in the Busby Hotel when I had to get done up. Mm-hmm. Um, went in there as a, as a senior sous chef. And I don't want to really hate the guy, but the head chef never had a clue what he was doing. Just never had a clue. So I was pretty much running the buzz at that point. Um, but I, through being a chef, through being busy, I think I learned just how to control my anger, my emotions. I, I learned how to just shut it all off. Do you just, mean like a coping mechanism was work? I, I pretty much, yeah. And that's probably how I got to where I was. But then I had to leave being a, being a chef because I've got sciatica. So I, I made her sitting at one Christmas, I'm the senior sue, and I'm sitting under a sink peeling ties and carrots. Now, I couldn't move, but I wanted people, I never phoned in sick in my life until, like, my depression really got on top of me. I just, I hate it. I'm a workaholic. Like, if I'm working, I'm happy. Um, so I left there and just fell into car sales, just apply for a job. So that way I had to do something, because mm-hmm. I knew I had to leave, and ended up falling into car sales. And What age were you when you were doing car sales? Uh, just about done 20. <laughs> Like, because you've done that for ages before, like the TikTok stuff and all that. Aye, thing. aye. So I'm, well, I'm 27 now. So, and I've done TikTok for maybe, I'd say I've been doing TikToks for just over a year. But I never really started properly. I never spoke to the camera until February. I see. I went and watched like your first 10 videos and it's just like, it's that dark side you were talking about. Yeah. What did you expect to happen when you first done it? Obviously, yeah, I've, I've, expect- I've deleted a lot of videos by me. Have you? I've deleted a lot of any. Why did you delete ones. them? Because I'm trying to put across a certain message and I kind of wish I never deleted them now because some of it was bad. Some of it was like, let's just talk about like how much like, I hate the world and all that stuff and the world hates you and like, you're, you're pointless or useless on that sort of shit. Because, again, that gets attention. Mm-hmm. When you say all these like, negative things, you attract the negative people and they, they all fester. It's, I mean, depression is just like, it's like a fungus, honestly. Mm-hmm. That's the best way to explain it. It's like the more people that are in it, the bigger it gets. Yeah, it's, def- it's like a trap. Like it was the exact same thing with the breakup thing I was talking about. Aye. Um, when you're, so when you've came on to it, yeah, like what were you wanting to do? 
like generally like can you remember before you first posted it were you like i want to gain a few followers or i wanted i I, th- I think it was attention i think because i was going through the breakup and that's fucking well honest by the way yeah it's attention so that's social media social media is attention there's still to this day some it's attention i'm I do it for the it. good I'm, of other people I, <laughs> I, <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> mother me. um no I, it's, it's attention 100 percent because i was how do i explain it i, I was trying to fit in with uh, with all these people going out drinking, not being me, and I'm quite a deep person as it is. I can I can t- I can talk about things openly, and and I like it. I like, I like to think I'm a I'm a big thinker. I think about things constantly, and posting those things on TikTok, I was getting people commenting, and I was commenting back, and at that point, I wouldn't say I, I I never had no friends, but I had no real friends because the people who I was with in my with my friends from my relationship. Cause I spent so long with my ex, like from 15 to 25, but all my friends, it was all in the one group of people, like everybody knew each other, it was all couples, and I just had to take myself out of all it, cause I, I couldn't face it, I couldn't. Is that cause of like the reminders? Aye, aye, yeah. I couldn't do it, I couldn't do it, I was, I was, I was madly in love with this girl, like until the end, and again we'll get further into it on that side of it, but like every, every wee reminder, I was, it was just breaking me, so I had to get it all away. I had to just start again. So, see if we do go, like, that was a wee bit soft and ever, and if we go deeper, when did mm-hmm. you start feeling, like, signs of depression? You said you didn't know what it was. Aye. Um, like, so you're in that relationship, which was 10 years long, yeah, well, nine years. Yeah, nine years, aye. Um, when did you start feeling, like, off? And, like, what did you think it was? Did you have any clue? Matt. My full my full life since I was I was younger I felt off. I've I've always felt different. I've always felt as if there's something missing. Like when I accomplish something, I'm like I get happy, but then I get sad instantly. Like for the next week, I'm I'm doing the dumps on my protein stuff. When that came, buzzing for two three days, and then speak to my missus now. <laughs> yeah, what's up with you? I, like, I don't know. Like I still get it. It's that's what why I, I tend to post that, and I wish I posted more about that. But from I from I, I would say the biggest part on, I noticed it was when I was twelve or thirteen, my big cousin died. It was a freak accident. It was a freak accident. Fell off her bed and had an operation, never made it through it. Um and then like I I don't know what happened, but I always had this thing in my head, I was just like, something's something's not right with you. Something's this is affecting you a lot, but also I couldn't show it was affecting me. I always had this thing where I have to be, I have to be a strong one. I always had that, that as well. I have to be strong, but inside I'm breaking. Like, I, I've got nothing here. I, I was getting into fights because I liked getting hit. Now, I think that was my self harm. I liked to get hit. Like, I liked to, if, if I was hitting, if I was fighting somebody, I didn't like hitting them. I preferred to hit them. If I, if, I, if I was getting leathered, I liked it. I got jumped outside that a bus stop. I was buzzing. Honestly, like, I was, I was so happy. I don't know. It was just I was feeling something. Like, I just felt numb for so long. And then, as I started working and stuff, I just noticed like when I was really, really busy, I wasn't thinking, and that's how I became like a workaholic. Like I had to, I had. Is to that st- what you're trying to do? Get out of your head? Get anything to get out? Of your I head? think so. I now that I look back now, like I, I've not really thought too much about the past because I'm very big on like it's done. I, I can't change it, but also know like to to get over all these things that I might still go on today, I need to try and process them. But it does put me in a bad place. When I think back to all oh, that being that person. Um but I from a very young age I started to notice that. But for in the relationship as well, like, the, I think when COVID hit, I think when, when when COVID started, see from the first two weeks, so all me and my ex done was argue because I couldn't deal with nothing happening. That's like, nothing's happening here. And then I was one of these guys done my garden done on the runs, done on us because I was just so busy. Like I'd, I had to do stuff to be busy. Boarded my loft, done my whole house up, spent thousands of pounds just to keep my head not thinking. And, and it didn't work? Didn't work. Didn't work, no. Well, I'd, I'd say it worked. So there up. wasn't it that, that much conflict before then? No, no, not really. Also, yeah, every couple has arguments and growing up together, especially younger couples, you disagree. And because I was a couple of years older than her as well, well, 18 months older than her, like, the times when I could go out and she couldn't go out and like these wee stupid things, nothing mm. ever serious. Um and then I, I think when I when I had less to do, that's when the arguments would always start. 
because I would, I don't know with him, I would just, my head would just start going to overdrive. Mm. So you, you said you started getting, but sorry, but you've, I'm fucking thrown absolute go for it. fucking go for it. That, that's cannonballs it, that's at you. This is why I want to do these. I want people to see the side where I can actually talk about it because I feel yeah. like hopefully this side can help people. Do you know what the biggest thing with doing therapy was is like, I maybe went for a rough patch for a year, about five years ago, and I did get over it, but I just mm. learned my own like ways of doing it. Yeah. And going to therapy was like yep. fucking one of the things that we done was go through my first breakup. Yeah. Paul kind of threw it on me. It was like, right, you are we're gonna like get a imagine your breakup's like a ball of wool. We're gonna pull up the thread out and look at the full thing. Yeah. And I was like, oh, can we do that another day, man? Aye, I can <laughs> and get then, that, I know. But it's let me understand what, because what I've realised is if I don't go back and look at all of those things, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do the same things, and yeah. I'm gonna, and I'm well susceptible. To, it was more anxiety I had. Obviously, yeah. they come hand in hand, but I was riddled with anxiety for yeah. the full year, and it was torture. But I can, like, I, if I if I go near a situation that, that's the same, because yeah. I'm not, I'm not fully healed. I think I'm way better. I don't get ones ever fully healed. Yeah, but I'm better than what I was before Aye. I started therapy. Um, and that's what I found was the biggest thing was like I was gonna I would probably make the same mistake if I never went back and fully fucking looked yeah. at it. Um, where what were you saying? <laughs> um, relationships. And you were gonna, you were getting better during the relationship. I so so I was getting better. So, I had you thought I'm depressed here? No, nah. I never knew what depression was. And see the funny is, see my older brother. He tried to kill himself twice. My yeah. older brother. So a lot of people know my older brother, Aaron Connolly. Um, there's a lot to do with football and like, he was an ex-footballer and stuff and that might have been a part where I, when when I spoke to him about things and I seen him I seen him like crisis mode like the day he tried to kill himself and I was on to the hospital and that sort of stuff and I seen him and I was like this is familiar and like, this is very familiar and that's what got me thinking I'm like is there something is it this serious and then I'd see him as like oh, he's tried to kill himself it can't have been a serious like it's, it's fine, you're just down, or you're just, you're just a negative person. People in work, somebody came up to my work the other day, one of the managers, and said, I thought you were just a negative person. And I'm like, I'm not, like, outside of working with you, I'm doing things that make me happy, I'm the happiest guy in the world. Like, I've got personality, I'm not just this robot that doesn't want to speak to people, doesn't want to know people, I just couldn't. Um, so I saw, oh, and I'd seen him going through that, seen, seen what the effects it took on my mum, my dad, my family. I said, I, I can't show him the that I'm feeling the same way. I can't do it because all I'm doing is doubling their pain. And then I remember on the day when he went missing, I thought he was gone. I thought he was dead. I, I went to my work. I went to my work in the morning. Oh, really? Yeah. Yep, so we got a text. Well, his, his wife, his ex-wife, got a text um, saying, I'm, I'm finished, I can't do this anymore. And that was at two in the morning. I got woke up at six in the morning. The airbrush tried to phone me and stuff. I'm the heaviest sleeper in the world. And I don't wake up to anything. So I woke up at six, seen that text, and I just started getting ready for work. Is that what, again, my, my ex at the time, she's like, what are you doing? I said, like, I need to go to work. I need to work. I said, like, I can't do it. I can't do it about this. And when I look back now, I think, like, that's mental. And I was like, why are you going to work and trying to work? I went in to work. And I spoke to my boss. I was like, my brother's missing. I said, my brother's missing. Don't know where he is. Um... Don't know if he's alive or dead. And my boss is just looking at me like, what in the fuck is wrong with you? And I'm like, did you stay in work? Uh, until about three o'clock. Surely so you wouldn't be able to sit. Two o'clock, because... Like, with that job, it's not like, like you're talking to people, surely you weren't able to do that. No, I never sold a car, did No, I never sold a car. You're cleaning them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I was just like, I was walking around again just thinking about stuff and contacting my family, contacting Siobhan and... We're all trying to find out where he is because we found out that he hadn't he hadn't done any. He was using his card and he was getting on buses like up to Inverness and Aberdeen and all sorts. So we found out, so that's what I put my mind. What in. was he doing? Like, uh, like just so he, he tried to throw himself in front of a train, right? And then he never. And he he said that like he kept thinking he's son at the time, and the only thing that he he could do to keep himself safe was to be around people. Is that I had to be around people. I wouldn't dent stupid in front of Emden. Emden. Anybody. <laughs> Good word. I know. I mean, new words. And uh, I just kept jumping on buses all over the country. 
So, and then the buses that he was jumping on, my work owned, so parks, parks of buses. Right. So, and then that's what then got me, right, I need to find him, like, we need to do something here. So I went down in the bus garage, spoke to him, tried to get, find out what bus he's on, and then he just got found, somebody seen him on a bus, so it went massive on social media, and somebody found him on a bus, and police got him at George Square. No, Buchanan bus station, sorry. And when was that? 2019, I think. Fucking hell. Yeah. And that's when you started? That, that's when I started to question more. I started to question it more, but it also pushed me more into not telling a single soul, not telling anyone. And then mm. I got to a point where work started, also we all started going back to work and doing these things. Not that was before work, so then COVID hit. And then I told you about that earlier. But so as things started getting better with COVID, I went back to work in June. And in the July, my mum's dog took on well. So that was when my mum, I've got a dog, my mum's got a dog. They had puppies and they kept one, I kept one. So it was like, we had her since day one. And she, my mum for me is like, well, he's really not doing well. So I went in my mum's house, drove around to mine before my work, went to my mum's house. My dog's head's double in size, eyes are closed. She's still there, but there's nothing there. Like you're talking to her, she's blind at the time. Took her in a vet and took her in the vet for 10 minutes and the vet said, I we need to put her down. And so at the time I'm like, again, I, I question everything. Like, if I, 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 that's just the way I am. I was like, how do you know that after 10 minutes of seeing my dog, you need to put her down? I, I just look at her. It's like she, she's getting worse by the minute. So I was like, can I, is there a specialist vet? Can I, so I end up going to special things. Bears then. Right. And there's a specialist vet over there. Took her in there. Spent, I think it was seven grand. She alive? She alive? Oh, really? Yeah. So I took her in there. The oh, fuck I should have done that with my cat. <laughs> I, so I, so yeah, like, I'd spend any amount of money on, on my dogs. Um, took her in there. She was in there for 11 days, but we couldn't stay with her. We could see her once a day, so I was going through every day to see her. But see when I got home for, for seeing her, I, I don't go for baths. I'm a shower guy. I go for showers. I was going for a bath and I was reading Good Vibes. Is it Good Vibes by is it? Lex, is it Lex? I'm not sure. I I've, I've, I've seen that. I can imagine the cover. I've not read it. Aye, so Next King, I'm sure his name is. So I'm reading that. I, again, I don't read books, but I'm reading that book and I'm lying in my bath and my ex will be coming like, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, don't know. But I was lying in the bath for hours. Just lying there. Just, uh, after that? After aye, the dogs? After, seen, after seeing the dog, aye. So it was when she was in the vet, I was still doing that. And I don't know, it was like, I was just lying there and I was like, I, I don't want to be alive. I don't, and that's, that was a, the first moment in my life where I, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. I don't want to be the one responsible for, I, I've always been the one that I felt responsible for everything in my family. Like everything goes through me, every, I'm always involved in, empty falls out, I'm not getting company. I said, if right, don't they like being at school, I was a school dinner money, like I split it, like it was always me. Everything always fell on me and I was always this young, successful young man. I've got a nice house, nice car, girlfriend, I've got a lot going for me. But I hate it all. I'm trying to think what's going on in your head. That's what I sort of want to know. Like, I want to know <clears> what the maybe like your inner voice, like what that, what your what's kind of saying. Like, I don't know. I think I found out recently that some people don't have an inner like. Monologue. I've seen that. I've I fucking that, speak aye. to myself twenty four seven. I never don't speak to myself. See, well, well, I don't think. I think I never used to speak to myself. Right. I think I never had anything. And then when things slowed down, that's when I was like, oh fuck, I've got I've got a brain. Like, yeah. I, what what are you doing? I'm like, and then I started to like, nights where you start to explore yourself and realize like who you actually are, right. and that's why like that line in that bath. That's when I was like, I was just lying there, like, this isn't for me. So you reckon you didn't have any thoughts? Because sounds more like you were overwhelmed as well, like constantly. Like... I I think I was overwhelmed, but again, I I'm, I'm just good at dealing with. It. I'm, right. I've always been that kind of guy who's like, I do better in those situations. So I, when I first. Spoke, I'll get more into my doctors, but when I first spoke to the doctors, I said, they spoke, I think, of functional depression. So functional depression is pretty much like, like workaholics and stuff. When, when you're depressed, nah, keep going. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And you can survive doing it. Nah, but when you stop, that's when the problems start. And that's where my problems started. But that's where I, ne I needed to work on myself when I'd stopped. Mm -hmm. Did start to actually seriously figure out what the fuck is wrong with you what is going on yeah it's interesting i would never had that experience i've got a mate that runs care homes he's yeah. like the richest guy i know he, um he has like three or four care homes and he's yep. within like a year of doing the business he took on about four massive risks 
had panic attacks and all yep. that, but then it would always pay off. Yeah. And then he went on to weeks holidays and he was fucking like destroyed. Aye. I came back and the doctor was like, doctor actually, I think when I say she laughed, it wasn't like a cynical laugh. She was like, you've got the opposite of what everyone else has. Aye. Like, do you know what I mean? She was like, you're the opposite. Like yeah. you can't take a holiday. Everyone else needs a holiday. Yeah. Um. So when you've went to, what made you go to the doctor's? I know I'm doing this in chronological, or- chronological know, order, but it, fuck it, like it, it, it works. It's fine. Um, see, but I don't know why we got to the doctors. I think it was more just, it may have been more my work, so, and then the doctors came after trying to kill myself as well. I never went to the doctors until the day that I was going to MLE, but I went to the doctors like two weeks after that. Right. And I think it was more like, I was thinking of my family, and I was thinking of like, the people that love me. So you've went to... How did that look as well? I'm so sorry for these fucking cannibals, aren't you? Fucking... It's all right. Um, we're well, trying to... Yeah, trying to kill yourself. I've never asked someone that as well. It's so all right, it's I'd fine. Know, I'd know where to fucking... That's right. I've, I've spoken about it plenty of people. Um, we'll go into well, that day. So I was going through the breakup, so... Do you think that had anything to do with it? No, 100%. Aye, 100%. So, but it's even fucking starting, hard, isn't it? Aye, it's, it's brutal. It's, it's horrible. And people are like, oh, it's just a breakup. And wait, that, that's your person at that time. That's, that's your person. And you think you're theirs. And then all of a sudden you're not. Well, I've also had two breakups. One was fucking horrendous. One was easy. Like, aye. it does, doesn't, like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, it, it was, depends on how your relationship. They're all different as well. Yeah. Aren't they? So, I, I, I don't know if I'm better staying from the dog because it's, I had, right, so stay, stay with the dog, right? I'll, I'll walk into the, the, the dog. The dog, right? So the dog survived. I'm in my bath, and I'm, I'm like, and there's thoughts like, can I drown myself in this bath? What can I do in that? And like, what if I just, I don't, I've never, took, I've obviously took experimenting drug stuff, but I've never, I've never took gear. I've, I've always been quite healthy in that way because of football and stuff. I've just never wanted to do that. Um, and I was like, could I overdose? And I was like, how much could I take to overdose? I've never took it and I don't know. I, I hate the feeling of being here. So I'm like, even though I want to kill myself, I'll hate that feeling. I'm not going to do that. And then, like, my ex is lying in bed in the room next to us. Like, I could do like half in my body. Like, mm-hmm. I couldn't do that to her. Um, and so all of these things. So like, I eventually get back to work. And when I'm back at work, that's when car sales was crazy busy. Like, because you couldn't buy cars for a while. So it was crazy busy. And I think I'm getting better because, like, oh, I'm busy again. I'm back to work normal. I'm fine. And then... Because you're getting, like, a wee bit of dopamine from selling, maybe, or something. Exactly. And there's a buzz. There's a massive buzz in, like, selling a car. Like, you're, I used to go home at night and I couldn't speak to my ex for, like, an hour. Like, we'd be going to drive me plans a Saturday night. I was like, give me an hour. I was like, my head's scattered that I can't think anything because I've just sold three cars and I'm buzzing. Um... But I so come back to work. I, I feel everything's starting to get better, and then the, the November comes. Things are starting to slow down. COVID, the Christmas break and all that sort of stuff with COVID, and my granddad takes on well. So my grand is my role model. He's the person I've always aspired to be. That's my granddad. He's he's a I've got a very good relationship with my dad, but my grand is not my dad. Even though I never spent as much time with my granddad, he was that person that I always looked up to. He's like that's that's a person. Everyone, I think everyone in the life has that one person. I think and that's. So you I don't go to advice for? No, I would never go to advice from. Um, but I just just tell, I just look at him in awe. Like he tell us, even for being younger, like he tell us stories, and you just be like, you're just amazing. Like you've just, I don't know, I just had this connection with him, like without it being pure a, a loving connection. Because my grand, my granddad's favourite saying to me is, I'm going to crack your jaw. But honestly, because I used to wind him up so much, and my older brother was his favourite, and I was his favourite child. And I used to, me and my older brother, were 11 months apart, and we used to fight constantly. Mm. Um, and because I used to batter him, James, you know, you know I did. <laughs> uh, my grand used to take his side, I'd hate my granddad for it, and then it'd be, I'm going to crack your jaw. Right. Okay. And there was a day, it was, it was actually quite a funny story, but I find it funny. And my dad's um, garden, my dad's got a big wall. So I picked up a stone, me and my brother's arguing, and I've launched a stone, my brother hit him right now, between the eyes, Fucking right? Hell. Scudded him. My granddad's standing beside him watching him. So my granddad's trying to grab me, I went up on the wall, and I've told my trousers, I need my granddad, right? So I've need my granddad. My grand, I just, I'll never forget this day, my granddad's just looking at me in pure shock. So he grabs a hold of me, gives me a slap, chucks me in the house, 
But see, every time we ever sold my granddad, it came back to that story. So I made you me. I like made you me. I like, showed me your ass and that is. I wish I could remember more stuff from it when I was a kid, mate. I really do. My see, I, I don't remember a lot of it, like, being very young. I, I'm one of these guys that like, people start telling stories and I'm like, what? And then like, you get into the story, you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, I remember that. Like, I, I blocked a lot of things out like, from teenage years in school. Yeah, like, I no, blocked I a lot of so. that out, but younger, I remember more. But I, I, So when my granddad took Noel, you couldn't see him in the hospital. So he was in my, he was in my dad's house for a month at first. Um, and... And work, my work asked me to go a test. No, never asked me to go a test ride. And asked me to go down to Blantyre, and that's where we kept on the cars and the new cars. So COVID's happening. I'm, I'm seeing my granddad. I shouldn't have been, but I'm going down and seeing him. I like, I'm not going in a car full of people. I'm not doing it. That's like, I'm seeing my granddad. And <clears throat> me and my boss had a big thought. And my boss turned and said to me, like, you shouldn't be seeing your granddad. I'm like, my granddad's fucking dying. And I shouldn't be seeing him. So... And that day, I said, like, put me back off and follow, please. Like, I was begging them. Like, they were putting people off anyway. So, like, please put me off and follow. I was one of the first people they brought back because I was more experienced. Um, I said, like, I, I, I need to be out here. And I hated my work for that. I think that's where I'm still struggling with my work. Well, they done that to me. Me and my boss made up, but it was just a stupid flippant comment. He wanted me to do something. And I, and I said no. Yeah. And he was, I don't he lost the rag, I lost the rag. And I got put back off and follow for three months i think so it was either i was going to go and follow i was going off sick there was no one between because my head was wasted i couldn't do anything i couldn't speak to people i was greeting constantly and then it got to in december and my granddad was getting taken into hospital so i went down to see my granddad i knew it was the last time i knew it was like it was that way he's waiting in the ambulance to come and take him to hospital you could just his, his head was gone all he was ever saying to you was is that one deal that's all i could get him and then is that one deal and then um, I try to fucking like get him changed and stuff to go in the hospital. So my dad's holding him up and my granddad's so he's shouting and bawling it's like fucking put me down and it's probably nice that we had a wee bit of laugh. It's yeah. our last sort of time like, like that's our argument laugh when that really should have had with Glaswegian. Aye. Like, he's just a wee Glaswegian hardy man. Like yeah. he grew up beside um Arthur Thompson, see his dad. Mm -hmm. So in Black Hill, so that's my granddad grew up. I'm pretty I could be the ask my dad, but I'm pretty sure he might be he may have been Arthur Thompson's dad's next door neighbour. Right, so okay. that kind of guy, so I just an, an old Glaswegian hardy guy. Um and I so he's went to the hospital. I'm getting my eyes out. We were just sort of saying get past Christmas. Like get get past Christmas, he got past Christmas and got close to my birthday. I'm gonna ever tell forget the date, but I'm pretty sure it was the end of July. And Again, I'm off work. My ex at the time, she was in the police, so she's up until Alan, learn how to been in the police. So I'm going through this all, again, by myself in isolation. I'm in my house myself. Not talking about it Not at talking all. to anyone. Not talking to anyone. Just acting as if everything's fine. Um, and <laughs> again, this will show where my head's at. Um, I'm, I've done four in my upstairs, two spare rooms, and I'm painting my, my room in this colour, actually. Very similar <laughs> to this colour. <laughs> Uh, and that's sort of green, so I'm painting like a feature wall. Is your, is your house like already done? You're just like, fuck it. I'm just keep doing stuff. <laughs> Aye, so it was a brand new house, a brand new house. I had all new stuff, and then I just done it again because I had to. <laughs> uh, spent thousands of pounds, and I regret it so much. <laughs> uh, I wish I had that money now. Um, I right, so I'm painting the the wall, and my phone goes. There's my dad, and I just knew, I just knew instantly. My dad was going up and sneaking up and seeing him. So my dad's like FaceTiming me. Outside the hospital, my dad's the biggest weirdo in the world. He's, he's hilarious. He's got no shame. One of these guys, like, he used to embarrass me so much when younger because he just didn't care. And he'd be like, sticking his through and he's speaking to my granddad, showing me on FaceTime, and all that sort of stuff. So I wasn't sure it was going to be one of the calls because things were kind of looking better, or it's not something serious. But I just had this feeling like, this isn't good. This is, it's not a FaceTime, it's a, it's a phone call. He's like, he just phoned me and he's been, I heard that I heard they want me to throw. He's like, get to the hospital. I'm like, right, okay. So I don't think I even said anything. I think I said, I'll wash my face or something. I was painting. I heard I was wash my face and that. Put my phone down, half a step ladder. Went to the hospital. Um, driving on the way in there. Uh, do you know where the garden hall in is in the school bride? No. No. So it's heading towards here, my Alfie Greenhouse. Get to the garden hall and my dad phones me again. Like, we're too late. So. In my head, just all right, okay. I still want to see him. I still want to say goodbye. My dad's a good because I'm grand as well. So I got there before my dad, and my dad, my dad comes up behind me, 
and then starts speaking to the doctor. I'm seeing that's the first time I've seen my dad completely broken. I've seen my dad lose his mum as well, my gran. And I've seen him cry and stuff, but it's the first time I've seen my dad like a broken man. I, I, I looked at my dad that day and thought, fuck, you're getting old. You know, you, you can see in the vulnerability. And he. That's tough, isn't it? I went through the same thing with mine. Aye, aye. It's start, starting to see like this guy who's raised you, big, strong. You can't. He, he, he's, he's. I don't know, it's really unbeatable. Like, he's getting old. And my dad's 60. He's born in 61, so he's what, 63 now? 62. Um, I seen that. And that started to play in my head. And then I walked into the room to see my granddad. And I walked down to see my kids in the forehead, and he's still warm and stuff. So he's, he's still as if he's just sleeping. Mm-hmm. So I was fine, absolutely fine. And then we're sitting in the room, two or three hours, they're all talking, as families do. I, I hate that as well. Families getting together when somebody dies. I wish you could like stay that way instead of just being families all in the place. And somebody doesn't have to die to be a family. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was sitting there waiting, and then my dad and my brother had a follow up for years. And my brother comes in the hospital, my dad's like, I'm just going to go. And I said, I'm just going to go. I said, cheer out my granddad, he left. Sat and spoke to my brother for a few hours, the one that tried to kill himself. Um, and then he went, so I was just sitting with my granddad. I didn't want to leave. Didn't want to leave him. And I, I gave him a kiss on the forehead, the way out, man, and he was cold. <laughs> he was cold, and uh, ah. I'm sorry, mate. No, that's right, mate. That's the only thing I got emotional speaking about my granddad. Mm. Uh, and that it, was, so, it sounds very similar like my grand just died and it's the same experience with the family and uh, people falling out and all that yeah it's it's, it's no nice so it's families are complicated but i can't only that none that matters when it comes to obviously one of them passing away so i i went to go home that night and i couldn't go home i was just driving a bit and then i eventually got back to the house it's about 11 o'clock at night might even be later and you have to me i thought there was a photo of me in the mirror when I'm bigger, so it was a photo of you, that was that night my granddad died. Um, I took that photo, and you, if you look at the photo, you can see my eye, just the way I'm looking at my phone. It's, uh, there's nothing there, like, it's just dead behind there. I went in there around 15 miles that night, and I, I never felt it. I never felt, I woke up next morning as, as if i never done it. And, but I, I had that time that, that was fucking good, like, I really enjoyed that. And so I just, I just kept doing it. Kept running, kept running, kept exercising, and that's how I ended up sort of where I am now. But I'm not fucking amazing, but I'm in decent shape, so. Did you ever at any point process? Like, it sounds like you don't process, like you don't sit and process it, any of it? Not in the time. Not in the time, I don't. Does that, do you always feel like that comes back? Aye, aye. So that's that's why I'm so emotional, my granddad. one. That's the hardest thing I come to process. Mate, I'll honestly start crying as well. I called it that time, but... Aye, you got your lips, you went... I know, I get that day, fuck, get it gone. (laughs) Um, It's quite skillful, actually. Just one single tear. Aye, just get it gone. I I told that as well, and the one I was crying on TikTok about my protein stuff. But I was like, you don't look as if you're crying. I, like, I don't tear up when I cry, but yeah. it just my voice goes and I, I can catch it. Um, but I, I don't, especially my granddad, I've not processed that. I, I know I've not processed that, but you'll see things like I put on TikTok, like I go up to my cell and I sit and I, I talk to him. It's some stupid, but I sit and I talk out loud. I'm sitting there talking and I'm like, Did he like that? How are Eh? Nah, nah, it's just around the house. Nah, so my, my <laughs> grand, if, if it's all right. It's been two and two together. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, if, if my grand went anywhere, I'd probably have been hugging for a walk. Right. I think that's probably the place I, I should go, but again, that would bring back memories. Whereas, like, I don't know, like, I see my grand, that's just some ridiculous, but grand is like, I'm a Catholic, grand is like my god now. I mean, like, I, I, I don't believe not all. I don't. But I just feel like, I don't believe there is, a, I don't know if there's a higher power or whatever, but that's. That's my that's my God or my granda. I don't pray to God, I pray to my granda. Yeah. And there's no praying, I just chat to him, tell him what I've been up to. Ask him what he's been up to. Um and just just What's stupid. What's he been up to up there? Ah, exactly. I like, how's the dogs, how's Jack? Like just stupid, stupid things and I'm just like it's just nice. It's, it sounds psychotic. If somebody if somebody had to come up and but walk behind me up that hill and see me talking like an absolute maniac to myself. They think, what is, what is this guy up to? But it's just my coping mechanism. Whenever I'm struggling, whenever I'm going through something, I just, I go back to my granddad and that's how TikTok started as well. So that oh, time, so you lost, what was it, like 20 kilos or something? Yeah, 25. 25 I, went, I went from 95 to 70 and that was like four months, five months. And you stuck, like your main method was running? Running, I Yeah. I, just stri- like, well, you're a pro youth player, so uh, you'd obviously have some sort of able, able I, to run away, I've never been a fit person. Like, I'm asthmatic and stuff. I've never been like a, a running fit. But 
How come you never made it as a football? Was it the knee? No, I, I did blame my knee, but no, I was just angry and I thought I was shit to be fair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was all right. I was, I was average. I was very average. Who did you play for in East Kilbride? Uh, so EKYC. EKYC was... And what year are you born? 96. Ah, maybe miss you. I was 95. 95. Because we played them all the time. Right, okay. So I played before Chris McSherry and stuff, like he was in... Oh, I can't remember. No. Honestly, I can't remember. So I, I played... It was Claremont. They were the worst cunts in, on the planet. Aye. They were, we used to, like, the, our games get Everybody abandoned. hated Claremont. Because they were fucking tramps, mate. That's why Aye. they were absolute arseholes. We get our games abandoned against them all the time. Yeah. And we'd go up. What, was, what are those pitches in East Coast Bride where there's like 12 Rank them? Hall. I always get in band there right. and then were, i seen them play against i uh, knew pe- people that played for blanter and uh, we'd be I, playing i, I played the blanter before the did you yeah. and we so i knew two of them because they went out in hamilton quite a lot and like we were playing on one of the other pitches against some other east school bride team and i seen all of them <laughs> scamping it was so funny <laughs> i seen uh what his name's ryan gallagher i think and uh he put i remember him putting off on facebook i just get sent off and i remember commenting going at me i watched you fucking crack him <laughs> Watch you crack someone. Oh, amazing. That's, I was a good thing about football, man. It was just, it was good to win the boys and that, but uh, it was on the fights and stuff. And that was what I was like. I just wanted to fight people with football. And yeah. that's probably a massive problem why I never made it. I used to think I wasn't angry until I started playing football. <laughs> Aye. It's a I different, I, I've had people comment my TikTok. It's like, oh, I've played against you and stuff. And like, you would never think oh, I, I am who I am off the field. Of it. like, I'm a different person. That's mm-hmm. like, football's different. It's a competition. It's not. I've got no bad blood against MD on a football pitch, but I'll treat you as if I hate you because I want to win. Uh, it's yeah. just that's the way things are. But in the second we step off, I'm a different guy. Uh, let's talk about the weight loss. So when you've went to running, no plan around just running for this. Like, are you running just anytime you feel shit? And like, what are the what thoughts are going through your head as well? So as I said, during, during COVID, you started the whole running five k thing, and I get in it a wee bit, and but I was going up the road and drinking. 20 bottles of Corona and I bought a mad dog and then gone and done it the next day. And that's how you get better, aren't it? <laughs> so I so always, always had that. I knew the feeling was good, but I fell away from it again. I could never stick to it. It was always off and on. Uh, always going through stupid diets and all that sort of stuff and never Which getting Which diets? Or just fucking Atkins and all that shit. But just, did, you, did you do stuff like that? I, I tried it all, I, I know, like, just like carnivore and all these things and then I'll try like grapefruit and you know honest stupid stuff but you because you by the sounds of it you've got fat just or like overweight i hate using the word fat um just from like maybe like life like your life's getting in the way if you know what i mean and you, you know that you can be fit and you, like that still attracted you like the sort of fast sort of weight loss and stuff yeah so i'd i, I got I was I wasn't no bigger when I, I was in the kitchen because I was I was too busy and I didn't want to eat because I was constantly tasting and stuff and that. But when I started doing car sales, McDonald's on the corner. I was at McDonald's every day. Um just got a McDonald's, a big Mac and fries for one ninety nine, we voucher hangs. <laughs> every day, honestly. Every day. Or you go up to Sainsbury's or whatever and just spend all sorts of money on food and takeaways every night. Did you see it coming on? No. No, I don't, I don't think he ever does, do he? But when you get bigger, you don't notice it until you're already bigger. Until now, maybe. Now that I'm uh, every day, like I track my food and stuff, so now I know. But back then. Oh, if you avoid the scales and you avoid taking pictures of yourself and all that, you won't see it. Aye. Yep. You might, and then somebody might take a picture of you and you go, oh. Aye. Shit. Aye. <laughs> so I know that's the way it got. I actually, I've deleted all my old photos, deleted everything, old Instagrams, all sorts, started different again. Um, I wish I never again because I had so many photos and. I think it got to a point where John Coward, I noticed I was painting my fence. Neighbours at the back. As stuff. usual. <laughs> Again, just to <laughs> busy, being busy, aye. Repainting the fence. Um, aye. <laughs> and um, being busy. Fourth call of the day. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and uh, my neighbours are in the back and I'm sucking in. I'm in the back and I'm sucking in. I'm right. like, what are you doing? You're in your back garden <laughs> and you're sucking in. So I was self conscious about it. Because well, mm. I, I, I was always fat. I was always, I was either doing boxing, football, dabbled a bit in rugby, broke my pinky and never went back. Um, I've done a lot of sports, always just been fit in general, and life gets in the way. I, I, I think that happens to so many people, but you get, I, especially young men, you hit about like 21, 22, you're still alright, but then you're 25, and you're like, oh fuck, I can harm more to uh, women. Aye, but, but you see yeah. that as well, but you, everybody does it, you see people you went to school with. I don't with. know if it's to do with the type of. Now, do not fucking call me a misogynist to anyone right. listening, um, but. 
I would say women tend to do more sedentary jobs uh, when we leave school. Office so, work and, yeah, stuff. and that like it's always lifestyle. Like yeah. that gets that like you said, like stopping playing football. So what that's when I started regaining weight again. Yeah. When I stopped at like nineteen twenty, two or three stone on within a year, just drinking and not playing football. Yeah. So I think that's massive to do. You see, right. it, like the age you just said is exactly where it happens. It's, 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 it. it's, I wouldn't say early twenties, but when you start hitting your mid twenties, that's when you look at. As I said, you look at people who you went to school and you go fucking hell. Like, oh, how much you've changed? And mm. It's horrible, but you do it. Well, we're human. We look at people. I rate the people that fucking make a new Instagram. They're like weight loss journey and all that. Aye. I fucking and it, that's it's, class. But, but that's class is cringy. Uh, that's what it is nowadays. It's even after, but, Do you know what's crazy? Putting up, you're buying a house and fucking making a new Instagram. Oh. For a house, has he seen a worst thing? Have you got my one of them? Ma- no, my, <laughs> my mate's missus. Uh, done that Eleven well. fucking grand. Well, I was going to say grand. I've just made that up. Aye, but one for dogs as well because I've got three dogs. I love dogs. Dogs are my world. But my missus done that as well. She had one that was called Bob because it was Bailey, Oscar, and Bella. Um, and. Of my ex message, sorry, and uh, I she, but she done it. I was like, "What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> well, you just put it on your own Instagram." Like, yeah. But, but and again, then write that as if it's the dog speaking. Aye, yeah. I, yep. says, oh, I, can't, I can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I, I know. I say I, I'm, I'm the exact same week. I it doesn't do it, but I think when it comes to like bettering yourself and stuff, and that's looked as cringy and weird and what like, my fuck. I deleted my first ever TikTok, first ever one, and I know TikTok was used to have my transformation. So I, I posted that and then I went into the changing room, changing room at football and I get fucking slaughtered. I get slaughtered. Mm. I'm, like, I'm buzzing, you know, I'm pure buzzing. Like, I've, I've just lost 25 kilos. That's me, I might have put a weight back on because I was, I was in the gym. But I was like, I'm, I'm feeling good. I'm looking good compared to where I was looking at. I posted that video about it because I'm fucking proud of myself and I'm getting fucking slaughtered for it. So yeah. I deleted it. I think I forget what that's actually like because I think I, all my like schoolmates and all that were like that. No. And then I think I just don't really entertain that. I, I, I don't en- I, I don't anymore at all. Like where I just But that's brutal what you're talking about. As I, in like it's not like oh, I don't entertain it. As in like I've just I think I've just managed to like now have friends that don't do that. But I, if that happened to me, I would still be like f- I, like fuck this. See, fuck. see if I still played football, I I, I can take it when it's all off. Just off, it's just one wee comment. Aye, well, you are, like, fucking, like, when the TikToks are blown up, I get stupid wee comments. It's just funny, like, I laugh at it and they laugh at it. Slag me, I, I, I would rather slag me than feel all sorry for me. I would. But, I when you're, like, fucking, oh, look at the state, you know, like, that's embarrassing or stuff, you're like, come on. Yeah. Right, we're, we're adults, we don't need to act on this. Yeah. Um, do you think the running and losing weight, could you feel your head changing at all Aye. whilst you're doing that? 100%. Yeah, yeah. I, I I work out more for the mental benefits than I do how I look. Yeah, also I'm doing this challenge now where probably why I'm doing this challenge now is maybe I like I kind of like go how the I look. Eighty one something. Aye, uh, well I kind of like go where I look, so I want to challenge myself. And, and again, doing a diet's fucking hard, man. It's hard. It's it's me- it's mental, more mental than it is physical. Because you can yeah. deal with being hungry. It's but there's when your brain goes, you need to fucking eat, and you have to tell it no. And that's that's a challenge. Yeah, and that's how we've got a fucking obesity pandemic. Yeah, so, I think as well. People like I always try to tell people just sack the last five to ten pounds off as well because once you're in it and you do feel a wee bit better, then people want more and more and more. But yeah. like, no, there's a line where it gets worse. Aye, like you lose a bit and then it's great, and then you lose more. It's fucking horrendous. Aye, that's how we the whole bodybuilding side of things where you look at but you look at some people's physique and. But you you look fucking brilliant and then go into a crazy cut and you're like you look bad mm-hmm. or you look malnourished but i get it it's, it's a sport people like it and it, as long as you don't stick it that way as long as you go back to having a wee bit of fluff on you and you'll be fine but there's some people who are like obsessed with being skinny and like all year round and that, that's not healthy and it doesn't look great well they pro- project a lot of that onto their clients as well so it is a fucking really toxic Aye. Well, right. I, i've heard that Personal trainers who've got clients on gear and everything. Oh, um, mate, it's disgusting. Go any any gym yep. around Glasgow and that's going on. Yeah, like this. I, I actually, my first year, I was just online. And nothing. Say it now. Nothing against people who take gear by me. See if you want to do disclose that. it for me, please. Uh, I yeah. would rather you disclose it because it gives people false hope. Aye. If you're on gear and you're saying this is really Aye, just say so you're on it because I, I I don't know if I, I don't put. I actually I'm highly against you. 
entertaining that with clients. Mm -hmm. Like, because a client who's, clients naturally come to you in bad positions. You never get a client going, here, mate, my life's fucking class. I love everything about myself and my body. Aye. <laughs> <I> know, <laughs> like, that's not why they come in PT. Aye. So if someone comes to you like that and they're like, and you like even suggest gear, like you're putting something into their head that will fuck them up. So I'm really against Aye. it, man. I'm quite outspoken about stuff like that, though, to be fair. I, I, I get it. I'm, I'm not, again, I'm not against people taking it for themselves and... I think if you do it proper, people abuse it and just are stupid. But I, if if you take it, be honest about it, and don't try and stay awake. If if you look a certain way and you start going, you can look like this, and uh, no, you can't. Yeah, no, you can't. Because people have got pure, especially guys at the start of the gym. No matter people in my DMs that ask some gym tips, and I gave them them, and they're like, oh, I don't want to be massive, but and I said, like, well, I've been training six days a week for the last almost two years I'm and i'm not it. massive <laughs> i and i and i enjoy myself constantly and i'm i'm fucked constantly you're not gonna get massive yeah and it's like, I'm, I'm not massive and it's been two years of graft you're not gonna get massive after six weeks of trial with a bit of weight yeah exactly and like girls especially do that as well i i a fucking like belter of a question i'm gonna try to do it without not looking at my notes so see when you <laughs> are taught so your whole page is well 80% of your page is probably mental health related to it, and then like 20% uh, is like you do fucking, fucking around and doing things uh, like you fucking try to open and fucking chicken and all that and stuff like that. And that's what made me blow up to be fair on the chicken so I, I think I, that's how I seen you that was I, what made me laugh so if you're talking about mental health all the time and you're also getting people talking to, asking you questions about mental health do you think that's positive on your own do you think that has a positive or negative impact on your own like taking on other people's stuff as well in the in the very beginning, I used to try and take it on and 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 also it, just it you talking about it. By the way, as well, does that make you feel better as well? Like both talking about it, it helps me. I see me talking to the camera. I'm I, I'm not talking to the I'm not talking to name. I'm not talking to the camera. I'm talking to myself. I'm I'm just speaking to myself. Almost like a diary. I I pretty much I'm just talking, and that's how maybe some of the raw things come out. And I watch them back, and it takes me to see the ones where I'm proper talking about it. It takes me a couple of days to post them. I kind of just start talking, and I I watch it, and I go. I don't know, mm -hmm. don't know about that, and then I fuck it. May as well just post it, um, because or sometimes I'll send them to the missus, but be honest with you, think, and then she'll be like, no, that's you being you, and post day one, so that's the one she should be posting more. Um, so it's 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 draining. It's it's more on the my DMs are, are f and they're crazy. And they're I fucking, can imagine me cause, fucking nuts because I used to, like there's a reason I changed the way what I do quite a uh, lot because I. I couldn't handle some of it. When I came across to empathetic coaching wise, the people yeah. that were in my DMs, I was like, I don't, I, I really yeah. stressing me out even knowing your situation. Like, really, is yeah. actually stressing me out what you're telling me. Yep. So that's where I, I, I mean, so I, you'll notice I'm doing more sort of like just fucking around the now because it's it's out of control. My yeah. DMs are out of control. But I I, I spent was it last Thursday. Maybe one last Thursday, but I'm, I'm walking around in the heritage walk and I'm walking around it six times and I get back to 150 people. So I was like, I, I need to get back to people. I need to do it. If I don't do it, I feel bad. And I just voice noted. And you're voice noting the same shit over and over and over again where I, I'm trying to be so genuine. We all and try to give decent advice. But I was like, the ones that are messaging me saying, like, just a thank you and stuff, what I'm being dry to them because I've got, I've got nothing to say. Whereas I know they might be reaching out saying thank you to try and like spark something. Where they don't know how to start that, but it, I've got I've it's got too big for me to deal with by myself. That's the simple and short of it. And what are you gonna do with that? I don't know. So you can't do that anyway. Like if you ever come out, like get a bit of following, and then like and then somebody else starts doing it. That's I can't I can't have somebody else do it. Oh, definitely not. But I mean, if you always say because I always used to say DM me and I'll try, but it was mostly with weight loss stuff. But no. mate, weight loss. So many reasons that people get overweight, and it's yeah, and, and I end up probably getting any reasons because it's easy to tell a stranger as well. So, so, like, my DMs would probably be quite similar. Like, when I'm like, I'll help everyone DM yep. and stuff, and like, I just had to stop replying to quite a lot of them. Like, I had to, no, and they like calmed down. And even then, I was like, I can't keep like because it was no. actually like it ruined my day if I was because I would take on one, I'd read one and go, oh my god, no, and it would actually fucking like. And I'd think about that all day and I was like, I can't fucking keep yeah. doing that. 
Do you find I'll, I'll get back to all and just like the thank you ones and all you got you're so amazing and stuff and you're like I'll just say oh, thank you so much and that's it. even that used to do in my head in by the way because I, I was like, I'm fucking not I because I I know I know I I seen that as well you've got pure what is it imposter syndrome syndrome yeah, yeah, yeah. where you're just like I'm not doing anything here I'm just like, I, I can't express how much I I'm just a random fucking like I actually I, hate you I hate you even saying that I'm classic what I'm doing it does my head in I it's like, I'm just I'm just being me like. Outside in there, if you see what I'm doing my day to day, like I'm just, I'm going to work, I'm walking my dogs, I'm eating my dinner, and I, I speak to you on there. I'm just a normal, normal guy. And I don't want to sound ungrateful for the amount of people that do follow me, the amount of people that message me, but it's fucking hard, man. It's so hard to keep up with. Mm. Um, I got to a point, I get the three notification, you've been on so many hours on your phone. Yeah. There's like at one point, it was like 13 hours in a week. And that's like, that's more than half a day. TikTok? No, I just delete it on your phone in general. So it's like TikTok, Instagram, text. Yeah. So I'm not, I, I don't scroll on TikTok anymore, really. I've not got time. Yeah. I don't have time for it. When I'm on TikTok and I'm making a video, or I'm replying to somebody, or I'm getting back to comments. When I'm, on, when I'm on Instagram, or I'm doing giveaways, or I'm doing something. There's like, I've done one, where I've done a giveaway on TikTok when I was waiting on the ferry two days ago. There's 500 comments. So now I need to go through 500 comments, put them all into a generator, and spin the wheel. What do you want to do with it all? Because you've still got like a job and all that. Personal training. You want to do PT? personal training, aye. So I'm, I, I'm just, I'm just too busy to start it. I'm too busy to start the course. You what are you gonna do? And mate, let's see for start the course. Do it in person, online. Will actually make you want to throw your laptop off a wall. Aye. So One I, of the I, biggest I've mistakes speaking, I ever made. I've been speaking to people. So I've been speaking to people about what boys have done it with with certain people in, in person. So you go on a Saturday, go once a week, and then you've got course work to do at home as well. And I think it's like twelve weeks or something, and then that's your PT. And uh, you can't fit. You actually can't feel it. Aye, but I hope no. Aye, I'm thick as fuck. <laughs> but <laughs> but I personal training. But for like my body type and who I am, I don't want to be like somebody training. Obviously, I want to train everybody, but I want to more concentrate on people like who are overweight and just don't know what the fuck they're doing. Because I've I actually I've I've got they're not clients who don't pay me. I don't take money off them. But I've got four boys I work with. Used to be five. One's out doing it by yourself now. And two of them are ready to go. They're probably ready all just now to do it by themselves, but I'm just being, I'm doing it for free anyway, so it's not if I'm taking money off them. Um, and the other people I'm helping, boys who don't have a fucking quality of always wait. And I'm teaching them how to do it. Three of them, three of them don't go in, two of them don't go in the gym, used to be three, don't go in the gym. And I'll say two of them do. And how are you finding it? Like, as in, like, so that I can take you just telling them about wait, cal- wait. calories and like that sort of thing. How are you I, finding all of it? I'm I'm finding it good. I'm I'm enjoying also, it because by the way, I'm, I'm not going to fucking ask you about your knowledge. I'm just it's alright. It's I, fine. Um, I'm, I'm not like that fucking it's all right. inclined. Um, it, it's going well. Every one of them's losing weight, so we're doing the right thing. And they're not because I'm not doing it in the gym, and it's more just a, like diet based. And they're all telling me well, I'm, I'm no hungry. I'm no struggling. And then that's good. There's going to be a point where offset plateaus, and they're going to have to cut the calories back a wee bit more, and I'll do more. And they're all expecting it, but everyone them like I. Ain't, Doogie's almost at 10 kilos lost, Jack's at, at 10 kilos lost, they actually put on a wee bit there. And I'm just trying to keep it, I'm trying to keep it very light-hearted. Like, losing weight isn't something that you just lose and you can go back to being normal. It's a lifestyle change, you have to change your lifestyle. You can't just go, right, I've lost 20 kilos, oh, let's go start eating McDonald's every day again. I'm going to put it back on. I made a video maybe like six months ago, because I was... So I was overweight. I keep hitting this. All my childhood. I fucking hate going through my story because I'm like, everyone's fucking hurt and I don't like having an expert. It's is is so like, I like, feel sorry for me I, and I, I'm the last I'm person. I'm well over it. it. I, I forgot what it actually was like. like. It was my childhood and then I lost weight when I was like 18. But I, and then like for the next four years after quitting football and all that and regaining two or three stone, losing it just through diet and like just not eating. Yep. And then 22, I started hitting the gym. So like five, six years ago, yep. I know you wouldn't think it because I should be <laughs> so I, mean, I get swatted um, off on my age online, don't worry about it. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, what was I saying? So when I, what the fuck was I fucking saying? Tell me your childhood and weight loss. Wait, and yeah, so when I got to 22, I, every day I'm making decisions to like, I've still got the mindset of, or the mind of someone who wants to overconsume. So right. every single day I'm making decisions like, my dad goes to a Chinese, I'm like, I've said no to you for four years. No, I've right. never had a Chinese, my dad, since I'm like, and it, like, I know you don't have to do that, yeah. but I do have to do yeah. that. You have to be in control. It's, it's been an, it's, you're not an addict. And I could you're... eat the Chinese and then I could be fine. Yeah. But I, like, I shouldn't, like, I know I probably shouldn't. Yeah. Like, I can get away with one Chinese a week, but... Yeah. 
a l- it's harder if I do that. Yeah. Way harder. But you, you start telling as well, but see, see all these weird decisions. How much fucking better do you feel? Oh, way better. Aye. Well, the, the water, the, like, I'm, I'm bad for caffeine. I'm bad for coffees. I'm bad for a monster. That's my, but I'm, again, caffeine doesn't make me hyper it focuses me. It makes me like, do you never have focused. a, so when I bought you that coffee, what do you think of it, by the way? Oh, it's good. Willow Grove Cafe, if anyone wants to go to a good it's cafe very, very in Glasgow. Good. It's, um, it's probably about 300 quid, but it was good. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, why the fuck is my brain going today? What what were you saying? I'm very Caffeine, sorry. if I've ever tried. I, do you never like, have, so when I, if I get past the third one and have another one, I crash really badly. Aye, That's I, why I never got one when I got you that. Aye, so I, I've got, a, I've got a kind of a weird routine with my caffeine where... So I wake up in the morning, don't touch it, don't touch it, I don't eat in the morning either, I don't eat until maybe 11, 12 o'clock, so my morning coffees that I put online, that's about 11 o'clock, I record them, so that's my wee break and work, go down, get a wee coffee, have a protein shake, and that's me, like, started my caffeine, then I, I don't touch it again unless I'm really tired, sometimes I'll have one in the afternoon, but then I'll have, like, a monster or a pre-workout or something like before in the gym. At night? At night, oh, aye, yeah. aye, cause again, it doesn't, it doesn't, it, it wears off very fast as well, so my, my, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a good tolerance to caffeine, but um, I have a coffee and I'm on some pre-workout. Is like my daily caffeine. I'm amount. fucking terrified of pre-workout, mate. Aye, I'd like all my I'd... my first time taking it, I was like heart palpitations, almost like that feeling of like what the fuck is going I don't on want here. Heart palpitations. I know. I <laughs> You're know. like, aye, but it's fine. Aye, but no, I, I love the, the tingles it gives you. I don't know what it is. It gives you just like tingling lips and like I. It's it just. I don't like that. That sounds like being on gear. I don't like gear either. I would. I, I couldn't tell you what gear feels like. I've never tried it. It may be like, I may actually really love gear, but I should do stay I, away from it. Do some? <laughs> yeah, okay. just finish here. <laughs> um, oh, so, you like the plan then? PT and. PT, that's my plan. Yeah, did you think about you were going to do that before you Aye. started TikTok? Is that why yeah. you started TikTok? Aye, so I've always had this thing. See, my first. See, when you go to high school and you have a meeting with a guidance teacher and they ask you, what do you want to do? What do you want to be? Do you ever get that? Uh, meetings with my guidance teacher asking me if I could leave school, please. <laughs> I, well, Can I, you go I, get I a job? As well, I, but I got asked what I wanted to do. And I can't remember them, but I, yeah, I don't know. I, well, I, don't, I don't know why I remember it, but again, I remember it. And my thing was, I said to him, I want to teach, or I want to help disabled people. That was my question, that was my answer to it. And at that point, he was like, well, what would you mean? I wish we were about a joiner or something. I said, I'll be a joiner, cool. No bother. <laughs> but and that's how I like craft and design and stuff. But, um, I had that because my brother's epileptic. Right. So my brother's, you would never know he's got slight brain damage, he's epileptic, but talk him, normal guy. You would never know he'd, he's not enjoying his life. He's a way IB and all that shit. He's a normal boy, but when he was younger, it was really bad. Uh, he got an app for falling, hitting his head off a table, stopped breathing, ended up with epilepsy. And when he got epilepsy, I started, I, I got on the books up to the library. I went to get epilepsy books and I reading them all. Just because I shared a room with my brother in the bunk beds and I was fucking petrified. I was so scared that what was going to happen to him was he going to die. I wanted to know if I could look after him. Mm. And I loved it. I loved it. Me and my brother's still very, very close, probably close to him than I'm with any of my brothers. Um, and I always had that wee thing in me. I was like, I fucking love helping people. I love that. I get such a buzz with it. Selfishly. I think mm. it's selfish as well. I was like, I oh, just, it's definitely, it's like an attention I, thing a wee bit as well. I, I, like, I, I, that's how I feel anyway. It's like anytime I do help a client or whatever, I get a wee buzz out of it. Yeah, I, so it's self-satisfaction. Mm. I, I don't know how it, the exact word for it, but uh, even that night in the gym, so I was uh, late at night, one in the morning, there was this Asian boy working out, and um, big boy, big boy, and I, I, he came up behind us. So I'm, I'm at, I'm, I think it was back and by, so I was doing some biceps, he's behind us, and I could see him watching everybody, seeing what's going on. And I just kept my eye on him, just kept watching him, seeing what he was doing. And I'm finished my workout, go to leave, and I look, he's on the treadmill. And I, I was feeling shit that night. I was just one of the nights, I was like, wee injuries, I'm feeling fucking rubbish. Put my water down the wee table, walked over to him, and I was like, I take you to the airport, to the and he's like, ah, mate, all I want to say is, I fucking love what you're doing. He's like, you're in here, it's one in the morning, and a Saturday, fair play. And seeing the smile on that boy's face, changed my feel mood. Yeah. He doesn't know I've done it selfishly. He doesn't know that. He's just fucking happy. Mm-hmm. And it's, changed, it's made me happier. So that's, that's what the world's missing. Every, it's, every kind of in a competition. It's not a competition. But I'll just try to fucking survive. I used to say stuff to like, there'd be, I worked in the gym in East End last year. Yeah. And there was like, you'd get, 
I was actually the, the, the soundest people in the world are from the East End of Glasgow, by the way. Aye. Like the soundest people, like proper, like the bar is and that. Yeah. The, and the funniest people in the world. Yeah. And I'd uh, be working in there and like, that was quite rough and ready as well, I would say. Aye. But everyone was Always dead. the best people. Not like scary, rough and ready, just like rough and ready. Aye. And uh, if someone, if I'd been watching like some of them for a few months, you could see they'd got, their form would got better. Or yeah. I would always make, Make a uh, comment on that. Be like, here, Mario, you're like, Mario was one of them. I yeah. was like, you're fucking form on the, he was doing like tricep rope pull downs. Yeah, yeah. And I remember seeing him before and he was doing that. bastard to get the form rate on them by now. He was doing them dead fast and stuff. Yeah. And then he, I just seen it was like slowed down and he properly like, went to failure. And I was like, mate, that was like to a T, yeah, perfect set. Do you know what I mean? And then he was like, thank you so much. Yeah. And then I was like, I need to do that more. I really do. Nah, you, you do it once, you get a good feeling. You can see, you can always tell if that smells genuine or no. And you can see it's a proper smell or whatever. And you're like, he was fucking buzzing about it. Because he's probably been thinking of shit for ages. Aye. Do you know what I mean? But we're, that's the thing about, we're all, everybody's human. We're fucking simple. We are so simple. It's unbelievable. We're like, a compliment. When's the last time somebody's came up and paid you a random compliment? But as a child, you're, you're always told, oh, this is good, that's brilliant, that's amazing. And as a child, you're probably happiest. Why in the fuck when you're still doing that, adults? Mm. Uh, when you probably need it most. When you've had a cunty a day in work and you, you're out doing things and you're saying, oh, fuck this, I hate this. See, Sunday just walk up and, t- you know, uh, by the way, you're smashing it today. Yeah, it, do, it does that's... actually change your mood, doesn't it? Of course it does. Or it's like, uh, it brings you out and it, because you can sometimes... It takes you outside your own head again. You know, yeah. oh, fuck, my back. Because I remember when I, when I was bartending, I used to get really angry all the time and Aye. then someone would just say something and then... Is that a wee reality check? Just yeah. that, like, oh, fuck, I. Like, people are watching me, people can see what I'm doing. And yeah, you can tell when it's genuine, if someone, like, makes a wee backhanded compliment or whatever, yeah, like, you're out oh, of fucking air, you get back yeah, in the I fucking face, you're like, oh, fucking spit, see, spitting this pint. You see, these people are fucking too nice. Like, these people are just, like, genuine, nice, like, 24-7. Like, they like, like, smile when I, they say it. Like, you're like, on the you're fakest right? person in the world. Yeah. Like, like, stop being so fake. Yeah, definitely. Um, right, I want to, we'll, we will wrap up, but I want to actually, because I think, a lot of the stuff you do on TikTok is really good. So I want more Thank get you. some of that stuff out of you. I'm, I'm looking at this, but there's I don't, there's nothing on that um, that I can <laughs> <Just> read. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like staring at it. But it's more, is your, are they still fucking oh, fun? It was bad. Um, what was the biggest thing out of those, that two years since you did try to commit suicide? I fucking struggle to say that. I don't know why. Sorry, um, that's helped you. So you, you're running, you, you lost weight, but like, what's actually changed in your mind as well because i think you say quite a lot your mindset's changed aye so it's obviously like running's just like a thing that you've done yeah what else has happened in your head and so what's helped the i think one of the biggest things is realizing that i've literally only got one life i've got one life and i think when you come so close to ending it you, you realize like oh, fucking hell like what the, if, if you if you don't end it and i fucking hope you don't i hope no one ever does but when you're in that mindset, then, then snap back into reality and go, fucking hell, and this is, I've got one of these and I almost threw it away. You realise that like, I need to start doing more. I need to start being more. I need to start being more humble, grateful, help others more. And all these wee things, again, selfishly, make me feel better and make me feel alive. And that's that's one of the biggest things that's changed for me. But I used, I used to listen to a lot of Tony Robbins. I, I like Tony Robbins, apart from he does this jump about thing and that, and I'm not to grow up Tony. <laughs> um, but he, he he spoke about a thing called pressing the blueprint. Well, my blueprint for my life, which I always thought it was going to be, and what I haven't led up to be, was happy family, nice house, nice car. I've got it all. And when you don't get, and you all, went for the like typical sort of sub- route, didn't suburban you? fucking, I like parent. <laughs> What nice, just wee happy life, which mm. you see in the movies. That's, that's what you're, everything you look at. And is. we are sort of like told in school that that's what you want. That's now. what you should do, aye. aye that's, that's where you should be. Mortgage quick. Morg- yeah. Aye, so I, I, I rented for a year first, uh, getting that to fuck, get a mortgage, like just get set up quick and then enjoy my life when I'm older. Um, so I had that full image, I heard the Tony Robbins thing, and that's your blueprint. That's, that's the way your full life has planned out to be in that moment. You have to realise that you can change that blueprint and well, that's just your own mind thinking that's the way it should be. If you can think a different way, then you'll start to do that way. So I just, I restarted everything, everything deleted every account, get rid of all my pals. I, I feel bad for it. I do. There's, there's one friend who still kicks around 
who I actually need to text after this because we're supposed to do sort something out. But there's a, it's, I just restarted my full entire life. And I was lucky I could do that where I've got fucking love and parents that took me back in. I, I could get rid of everything and just start again. The only thing I couldn't restart was having my dogs, but I fucking love my bits. So I would never get rid of them. So my plan was actually go to Australia. That's what I wanted to do. Right. But I would tend to take my dogs in and fuck me, it's expensive. So uh, never. you can't do that. Aye. Well, you can, but it's like 10 grand or something. Uh, well, no money when you get there. Aye. <laughs> yeah. So, aye. And then, like, I, I, was, I wouldn't say I was set up money wise, but I sold my house. I don't know how you that. Spent most of it doing my teeth up. And they're still well done. That's fucking a year later. Um, and then gave our half it away, gave our half to my brother because he was struggling. So, like, at the same time, I was like, if I'm going to. If I'm going to start with my life, I can't have anything now. I, I can't have anything because I'm going to want to do all these things. And I need to I need to have nothing to restart it from the person that I actually want to be, not the person I was taught to be. You were moved in home as well? Moved back home, aye. Moved and back that, home. That I've done that as well, like twice. <laughs> aye. So I, I had to also break up where the mortgages in both our names, but in the time... I had offers to get a lot of money to buy my ex out and stay in the house. And I thought about it. I did. I thought about it. Nah. nah just get it all gone. Because I can buy another house one day. It's not the end of the world. Mm-hmm. So it's when they let all and I go and start again. I think that's a good message to end on, isn't it? Yeah, just, just fucking start again. Start again. Well, because, well, well, especially after a breakup, I think that's because you need to start thinking about where you're going to go like because you've now always thought about like you and them and then it's they're not going to be there anymore so yeah. it's like that whole has to change that whole thing has to change don't it? and that's head. a bit you can't get through your head that's a bit where you kind of go i, I can't of change that yeah and then you do get over it i got a lot of comments saying stuff like oh you're, you're just over a breakup and stuff but i don't talk about i've not had a chance to talk about it all yet about my just for life it's 27 years it's a long time to talk about yeah. But I've not had a chance to like get that part out that I go out today, and I've got a lot more to give. But <laughs> we'll be here all day, so <laughs> yeah, we'll probably have you on again. But mate, it was a very interesting Fun. story, and I think you have your proper inspiration on. You take those deep breaths whenever I compliment oh, you. I'm, I'm, oh. I'm no, I'm the worst at fucking stuff like that as well. But honestly, I think you're inspirational on TikTok, and I think you should Thanks, keep mate. doing what you're doing. And good luck in the PT field. Wait till you see how much a fucking mess of. of <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll come in and make it worse. <laughs> no, you won't. You won't at all. As long as you don't put your uh, clients on gear, you're uh, already better. Than I don't know where to buy it, so if it's done, don't. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you Please. for coming on. Cheers, mate. Thank you.